Yeah, and then this can be here so that people know that. Who's in charge around here? continent are found to be an assortment of features that are difficult, if not impossible, to explain by reference to modern, currently observable processes, and when taken as a whole, implicate the action of events so extraordinary that they almost defy comprehension. It is our judgment that the full mind-bending story of these events has yet to be told, and that when told, it will alter forever our understanding of both the history of the world and of humankind. Well, I think the theme of our excursions, because we're not just sightseeing, we're following a trail of evidence, we're, it's almost like, you know, we're engaged in the solution of a mystery. Yeah. The mystery is hidden everywhere about us in these amazing landscapes. And so it's not about just looking at a, you know, a, 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 a pretty sight or a breathtaking sight, it's about being able to understand and decipher the story. So it involves, you know, the kinds of things we've been looking at this week, these extraordinary landforms, the coulees, the cataracts, the gigant eddy bars, the current ripple trains that we've been looking at, <clears throat> all which tell this story. Uh, and it's an amazing story. And then when you juxtapose on that, some of the archeological stuff, you know, realizing that there's a very deep and interesting story about, you know, the former inhabitants of this land, the paleontology of it, because once upon a time is, you know, one of the constant themes that's being interwoven with our, with our journeys is, the, is the, this lost world of the Pleistocene that was once prevalent upon this North American continent. Yeah, well, yeah here you can see, here comes the monocline right here. Upper Coulee, you can see where they converge, and right where they converge, that's where the uh, extinct, there was a waterfall right there, 900 feet high, a mile wide, and then here's the water came down like this and then spread out. So this is Banks Lake. We saw some of Banks Lake, I think, on the first day. Well, that was the bonus trip for people who got here a day early. So really that's about all it is. I mean, you can kind of get the context of where we're at within all of this. You know, Telford, Scabland, Grand Coulee, all of this is headed towards Quincy Basin, flooding out this way down Drumheller Channels, spilling over Potholes Cataract, Frenchman Coulee, Crater Coulee right there. West Bar, which we'll see is the big current ripple bar, that's right there, just yeah. below, and here you see Moses Coulee. Look. The moraine, the Withrow moraine right there. Mm. Moses Cooley coming down, hooking to the west, hooking to the south, and then converging onto the Columbia Valley right there in this big V. Because there was also a whole lot of water coming down this way as well. In fact, it was probably 800 feet deep up in here. Victor Baker wrote a paper that 
ramped up the whole scale of the Missoula flood because he was able to find high water marks on the mountainsides and was then able to calculate based upon the, the gradient and there's a very slight shallow uh, gradient to the south here, right? So he was able to determine from the high water marks how much water flowed through this valley. And he came up with about 800 million cubic feet per second, which is about roughly 20 times the flow of every single river on Earth flowing at once, okay? I mean, come and drive. This is awesome how the distance here can be crossed. Was, this, was it just even more easily eroded? Or is this something kind of having to do with the proximity to the glacier? I think it has to do with proximity. Here, picture like here's the lobe. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's and then one just lobe. Dump it off the, the top. Lobe, pouring down this way. Over here, it's coming under the lobe and spilling out this way. And over here at Alta Cooley, which is here, it's following in the marginal. That's coming down into the Columbia. This is coming down. They're meeting here. Water's coming down this way, spreading out, filling Quincy Basin, coming down this way, also contributing to the filling of Quincy Basin. Water rises, spills over here, here, and here, and it begins to drain out this way. Some water runs like this pours through Sentinel Gap, this water comes down, this comes down, all of this is coming down to right here, Wallula Gap, all of it, right there. So this is the gathering of the waters, this is the parting of the waters, and there may be giant floods coming up the snake out of southern Idaho and Utah that are meeting. Yeah, it was down here where the snake was reversed in both directions. Reverse, well, in one direction. And the snake was flowing this way and it reversed here all the way to Lewiston, Idaho. Back flood. Back, Back flood. The river. Back flood. And so we visit sites where, you know, there was some connection to the great mega beasts that, that roamed the unglaciated uh, land of North America. So we visit, you know, mortality sites and we visit museums as well as looking at the geology. So there's primary, three primary areas of interest in, in, in these journeys, which is the geology, the archaeology, and the paleontology. And they, there's no real clear line of demarcation between them because you can't talk about, for example, the paleontology without understanding the geological context in which you had thousands upon thousands of huge mammoths roaming this land or giant ground sloths or packs of dire wolves and the mystery of what became of them is wrapped up in the mystery of this story that the landscape has been preserving for us for 12,000 years now until we finally had enough knowledge and enough technology and enough um, aids to our to our sensory apparatus that we could begin to see things that our ancestors of even just a few generations ago could not see. And so we're in a position now where we can begin to decipher this, this great story that's unfolding about our own human past on this planet. So that is the sort of the underlying theme of these tours. They're not just, like I said, a tour for sightseeing or for fun, although, of course, all of that is part of it. But it has this other dimension to it. And the dimension is, as it were, we're on the trail of a great mystery. And every facet of this mystery is just fascinating.
Shamanu Vengara Anurana Loya Horus Maes Freya Shara Ere Shala Odin Indra Shamanu Vengala Anurana Loya Horus Maes Freya Shara Ere Shala Odin Indra Shamanu Vengala Anurana Loya Horus Maes Freya Shara Ere Shala Odin Indra Shamanu Vengala Anurana Loya Horus Maes Freya 